So what we're going to basically do today, if you want to create this as your um, your essential question or your topic, the topic would be the origins and diffusion of the Industrial Revolution, if you are writing topic, if you are writing question, it is, I'll have this, industrialization realm and diffuse. Industrial Revolution is actually defined on your next slide. I'm not going to make you look it up. But when you are ready with your question, we will head on to the next slide. Oh, Mr. Holland, I have a question. Yes, right. This is totally off topic, but you know when you brought my jersey home, do you still have that? Or? I don't. They gave it to say that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Ready? No, it's a, they took him to the girls' hockey to the, when the girls' hockey team went to the wild, they needed him for a photo and photo team. And I threw a bunch of the so they didn't need to carry them. Okay. So here are two definitions for industrialization. Not to confuse you, but because it has two different meanings. Urbanization has two different meanings. It's the process of changing a rural area to a city area, and it is a movement of people from south from rural areas to city areas. So it actually means two different things. Industrialization means two different things. We are industrializing the way we do agriculture, and our world is moving towards industrialization. So the first meaning says basically the change in production system to the use of machines and mass output. Kind of a simple translation of it. The second thing is uh, a society changing from non industrial to industrial. You see this on a test, most likely to be in the connotation of the first one. Do you understand how both of those are true? A country can industrialize as can a business. Oh, should I skip cottage industries on the slide before, didn't I? Um, cottage industry, um, if it is on your test, it would only be on your test to say how was manufacturing done before the Industrial Revolution. I won't ask you really thoroughly to define it. But I do want to give you an overview of what cottage industries were like so that you would understand how in the Industrial Revolution changed stuff, okay? So back in the day, if I sold the shirts, I bought the cotton. I spun it, I weaved it, I sewed it, and I sold the shirt all in my cottage. It's not actually what cottage means, but it translates well into our understanding of it, okay? So it wasn't like I mass produced. It wasn't like I specialized and only made thread or only wove cloth. I did the full manufacture and assembly of textile on a small scale, high labor, low production, high cost method. Does that make sense? The cottage industries were not the cheapest way to do something. So a typical cottage industry would be a blacksmith. And they would, they would bring iron in and form it, uh, make it into usable products, and sell them out. Okay? How did it change? The big change then is we begin the process of having manufacturing and advanced production systems we have increased production, okay? What do you see in this photo beyond the obvious of child labor? They're not wearing shoes. Beyond the obvious of poorly treated children. Machine. Mass production. Mass production. It amazes me to think that someone actually that. Why are there only two kids? Because uh, the rest of them were killed 
What is the machine for? I don't know. All right. So we are going to ask, answer these six questions really quickly about the Industrial Revolution. That's really all we have for notes on this. And it should cover everything you would need to know for the upcoming test and for the AP exam. Okay? Um, you might want to just go question by question with me so you have them. Okay? Um, anyone know where the Industrial Revolution began? Britain. Britain's a good answer. Europe's not a bad answer, but we should specifically know England. Not so much London as Manchester and, and parts farther to the west, but it certainly begins in England. United Kingdom is an exceptional answer. Um, but really, it's specifically within the English part of the United Kingdom. Okay. When? I'm going to show you a timeline. The timeline is going to indicate that it's somewhere in the 1500s all the way to 1908, but the best kind of overview is 1750 to 1850. Why cotton? It says the textile industry significantly grew during the Industrial Revolution. The demand for cloth, and that's a big deal, and one of the reasons cotton is king is because the demand for cloth was so high. Okay. Um, so merchants had to compete with others for the supplies to make it. This raised a problem for the consumer because the products were at a higher cost. The solution was to use machinery, which was cheaper than products made by hand, therefore allowing the cloth to be cheaper to the consumer. And then it talks about some of the different changes. Why was cotton a big deal in this process? High demand, rapid changes in machinery. Okay, look here for the children. The biggest reason is the demand for it. Imagine wearing wool all the time. The introduction of cotton is huge. Uh, why Europe? Lots of reasons, but primarily because they had money and resources. Okay. The English were uh, amongst the wealthiest of the world groups. They had coal. They had iron, they had water power, any of the things necessary to advance existed, making it easy for them. Okay. Um, and they really already had an economy, so that, that certainly helped. Impacts and outcomes. A lot of things come about from the Industrial Revolution. Um, bigger cities, more factories, more goods, um, a couple more at the end that we'll get to. I want to look at well, let's just look at these quickly. Don't you don't have to write anything yet, but I'm going to show you some key changes in a moment. You could write down the James Hargreaves spinning Jenny. That one you should know by name. You don't need to know a picture of it. But the invention of the spinning Jenny is considered one of the key industrial revolution changes. Do you know why he named it spinning Jenny? Jenny used to be a spinner. You're all close. Um, you do not need to know Edmund Cartwright's power loom by name. You probably should write down Eli Whitney in the cotton gin. <coughs> you want James Hargreaves? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me.
Eli Whitney and the cotton gin. Did I tell you the telephone game I played about Eli Whitney's cotton gin one year? I had eighth graders and I was teaching them American history. And so we played telephone because I wanted them to remember Eli Whitney and the cotton gin. So I wrote a poster and I hung it on the wall and up in the top of the front of the room and it said, in 1873, Eli Whitney invented the cotton gin, which made it easier to clean seeds from cotton rapidly improving the rate of cotton production. By the end of the seven or eight people that came in, they said, Eli Whitney invented the cotton gin, which turned cotton into gin. It's not true. It doesn't do that. OK, so here's a timeline. There's a couple more um, inventions of the Industrial Revolution that will need to know, so let me highlight those. This is why I said the 1500s, um, the stocking frame, it's the first kind of invention. You should know Jethro Tull and the seed drill that is most commonly called. Anybody heard of the band Jethro Tull? Wow. I'm impressed. You're, uh, folks into that kind of music? My dad is. So, so you heard aqua the seed one. one. Seed drill. In other words, it plants the seeds. Okay. Um, another one, and we've already done James Hargreaves spinning, Jenny. Right? Yeah. Um, Watts steam engine. It's kind of a big one. Um, that I don't know. It's a good question. I'm guessing not. We've got Eli Whitney and the cotton gin down already, right? Um, maybe that's it. But it tells you all of the different things in here, which make big changes. Um, a tunnel under the Thames River for travel. Um, a steam boat, a railway between Manchester and Liverpool. You should write one of the key changes as the railroad. That's a huge change. Um, then you don't need to know this, but they invent the Morse code and the telegraph. Um, <coughs> Singer invents the sewing machine. <coughs> Bessemer steel is probably worth writing now. Dyes, considered a big deal. Um, Louis Pasteur, who's the dude who invents um, polio vaccine, right? Fermentation, all kinds of weird things. It ends with Henry Ford. What? Ford doesn't look into it, it's a big deal in you know, another chunk of our unit. You guys know what a zeppelin is? It's the yeah. big balloon. Yeah. 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 It's a blimp. Yeah. It's part of a man. The other part of the man is the lead. Okay. All right. So, what else is changing during the Industrial Revolution? I do have a few things for you to put there. Okay. Ready for the first one? Second Ag Rev it was occurring during the time of the Industrial Revolution. Second Herb Rev. Do you understand that to be urbanization? The first route of cities was in 10,000 BC. This is kind of when cities become really big. Called the Second Urban Revolution. Okay. Um, and then you have to note a population change, and you can note that either with stage two of the demographic transition model, you could note it with the J curve, or you could note it with the population explosion. All three descriptors are adequate. 
question. So then if I show you the PowerPoint, basically talks quickly about the diffusion. This map summarizes the diffusion of it. It goes from the United Kingdom to the France and Germany to Eastern Europe to Southern Europe. So what was this key change in a railroad? Where was that? Um, it's it's just one of the key changes of the industrial revolution. I don't think it needs a specific date or time because it happens the whole time. In fact, I don't know what one of the biggest changes in the railroad was. Each company, on purpose, so no one else could use its rail lines, made them all different widths. So that each company owned those. The United States government in I don't even know the year, but they standardized the width of railroad tracks. Ending railroad monopolies. Sort of. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Because of all the rapid travel they have. So, not only does it diffuse through Europe, but then diffuses to America. So those, it's pretty simple that it diffuses through Europe and America. Yeah. Do we have to know what the diffusion thing, like where it is? If this picture makes sense to you, you're golden. I've never seen them ask, where did it go to first or second okay. or next? But it says in the outline, the development and diffusion of the Industrial Revolution. I, they're not going to ask you what date it got to Czechoslovakia. They're not. They're not going to ask you who got it first or second. If you know that it originates in Europe and diffuses throughout, or it originates in England and diffuses throughout Europe and America, you should know. Does this map what it looked like? Yeah, there are all these. So then, tomorrow is models, and then the more you have on your worksheet, the more that should make sense as we process models tomorrow. Okay? Questions? That leaves me a handful of minutes to do a few notebooks. Do you have them?